Hello everyone, my name is Carol Nunez and I'm one of the Math Zone tutors and today we're going to talk about probability. Let's start by defining what exactly probability is. Probability takes into consideration outcomes, that being the total amount of outcomes, the sample space, or the favorable outcomes, which is called the event. Probability of an event represents the likelihood that an event will occur. Probability compares the favorable number of outcomes to the total number of outcomes. Let's go a little bit deeper into what sample space and event is. When we're talking about sample space, we're referring to the set of possible outcomes of all possible outcomes. For example, if I'm rolling a die, the outcomes that I can get is either a number from one through six. Or for example, if I'm spinning this wheel, it could be any color from red, green, yellow, or blue. When we're talking about an event, we're referring to when an experiment is performed, an outcome is expected from that experiment. And this expected outcome is what we're referring to as the event. An event is a subset of the sample space. So that means that our event comes from our sample space. We can look at probability from a scale from zero to one or from zero to 100%. When we're talking about a zero probability, that means that that event will not occur. For example, if we're looking at here, what is the probability of pulling out a triangle from this bag? As you can see, there is no triangles in that bag. So that means that the probability of pulling out the triangle would be zero. Now, if we look at this middle part, when we're flipping a coin, you either have two outcomes, either a heads or a tail. The probability of spinning a tail is a one out of two. Our favorable outcome is spinning a tail, so that is one. And then our total amount of outcomes is two. So that's why we have one over two. And we, if we convert that to percentage, that is 50%. Now, when we're talking about 100% probability, we mean what we mean is that there is a 100% likelihood that that event will occur. So for example, if you're already watching this video, that means that the probability of you watching this video is 100%. Or for example, if I have another bag with marbles, and let's say they're only green marbles, the probability of me pulling out a green marble is 100%. So there is actually no percent greater than 100. So 100 is our cutoff. If 100% is reached that means that that event is happening or the likelihood of happening it's always so we cannot have a greater percent than 100. In this video we're going to talk about experimental theoretical probability, probability of the complement, joint probability, and union probability. Let's start by defining what theoretical probability and experimental probability is. When we're talking about theoretical probability, we haven't actually performed an experiment. This is all calculation based. So this is defined as the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes. When we're talking about experimental probability, well, this probability is determined experimentally. And it's based on the number of times that the event has occurred during that experiment and the total number of times that the experiment was conducted. Let's start by doing a theoretical probability example. The example says the following. The probability of pulling an ace from a deck with 52 cards. Our favorable outcome here is the outcome we're measuring. So how many, how many aces are there in a deck of 52 cards? There are four aces. Then we have to divide that by the total amount of outcomes. Since we have 52 cards, there are 52 outcomes. This fraction can then be simplified to 1 over 13. So 1 over 13 is the probability of pulling an ace from a deck with 52 cards. Now let's talk about the probability of the complement. Probability of the complement is defined as if PA is the probability that event A will occur, then PA with the apostrophe denotes that the probability that event A will not occur. For example, if I'm talking about the probability of it raining today, then the probability of the complement is the probability of it not raining today. Let's start by doing an example of the probability of the complement. The problem says the following. A single card is chosen at random from a deck of 52 playing cards. What is the probability of choosing a card that is not a king? So as we saw in this previous slide, the formula for 
the probability of the complement is going to be that the probability of the complement is 1 minus the probability of the event actually happening. So first, let's find out what is the probability of picking a card that is a king from a standard deck. So how many kings are there in a standard deck of 52 cards? There are four kings. This is what we're measuring. So the probability of getting a king is going to be 4 over our total amount of outcomes, which is 52. Okay, so now I can just substitute that in our equation, and we would have that the probability of the complement is equal to 1 minus 4 over 52. So this is a fraction, and this is a whole number. So to make 1 a fraction, we would just have to do 52 over 52 minus 4 over 52. Okay, so 52 minus 4, that is going to be 48 over 52. And 48 over 52 simplifies to 12 over 13. So the probability of us choosing a card and it not being a king is going to be 12 over 13. Now, let's talk about union probability. Union probability refers to the likelihood of event A or B occurring. And it's denoted by this formula. So this formula means that the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the joint probability of both A and B is going to be equal to the probability of the union of both events. Now, let's do an example of union probability. The example says the following. What is the probability of rolling a dice and getting an even number or a number greater than 3? So first, let's start by finding what is the probability of having an even number. So when I'm throwing a dice, my outcomes are going to be the following. I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Out of these whole numbers, the numbers that are even are going to be 2, 4, and 6. Three of these outcomes are my favorable outcomes over my total amount of outcomes, which is 6. Now let's find the probability of it being greater than 3. When we're looking at this set, the numbers that are greater than 3 are 4, 5, and 6. Three outcomes are going to be greater than 3. So that's going to be three favorable outcomes over my total amount of outcomes, which is 6. Now I want to find the probability of it being both, of it being a number that is even and greater than 3. If we're looking at this set, the numbers that satisfy that are going to be 4 and 6. 4 and 6 are numbers that are greater than 3, and they're also even. So we're talking about two outcomes over my total amount of outcomes, which is 6. If we're putting this all together, we would have p of it being even plus p of it being greater than 3 minus the probability of both. And that's going to be 3 over 6 plus 3 over 6 minus 2 over 6. If we evaluate this, 3 plus 3 is 6 minus 2 is 4 over 6. So the probability of it being both an even and a num or a number greater than 3 is going to be 4 over 6. Now, let's do a second example. The example says the following. Find the probability of a student being from University Park or part-time student. First, let's find the probability of a student being from University Park. So, the measured number of students that are from University Park are going to be 40,639. over the total amount of students who took this survey, which is 81,080. And then the probability of a student being part-time, that is going to be 10,561 in the survey, 10,561 students were part-time students, over the total amount of students who took this survey, which is 81,080. And then the probability of it being both, okay, let's see. In this table, 
the number where University Park and part-time students meet is going to be 1,110. So that is the number of students that are both from University Park and are also part-time students. So then that is going to be 1,110 over 81,080. So if we put this all together, we would have 40,639 over 8180 plus 10,561 over 81080 minus 1,110 over 81,080. And if we evaluate this, we would get 50,590 over 81,080. And we can approximate this to the to the hundredth decimal place to be 0 0.62. So this is gonna be the probability of a student either being from University Park or a part-time student. Now let's talk about joint probability. Joint probability refers to the likelihood of event A and event B occurring at the same time. So if we have a word problem, we wanna find the keyword and. The formula here denotes the following. It says the probability of event A happening times the probability of event B is gonna be the joint probability.